there we go. I think we're in. Okay, here we go. Welcome Great. to the No Life Jackets podcast, episode two, with my buddy Cole. I'm your host, Brian. This is the show where, uh, oh man, I had a whole intro thing planned here, Cole, and it completely abandoned me. It was it was, it was was on like uh, the Whose Line Is It Anyway thing. Welcome to the No Life Jackets podcast, where the intro is too long and the production values don't matter. There we go. I, well I saved done. it. I'm, I saved it. I I'm saved glad it. you thought of it. I'm a professional podcast. Obviously. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, we'll get the we'll we'll just roll right in here. So uh, Cole, uh, just get a little backstory for this audience that is totally going to watch this video. Mm -hmm. um, Cole here is my best friend, uh, growing up forever. Oh. Uh, yeah, straight straight facts, straight <laughs> facts. Best man at my wedding. Uh, best man a lot of other places too. <laughs> See what I did there? Best man. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, uh, I got a whole bunch of random questions here um, because, you know, I mean, when you grow up with someone like that, you're like hanging out like every every week. And then, you know, now we got to hang out less, uh, which is disappointing. So I'm going to get all the catching up done in the next uh, mm. hour or two right here. Right. Now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a different man now. He's changed. He's changed, guys. <laughs> uh, he's more sensitive, uh, more mature. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, so let me pull up my list of questions here, and we're just gonna we're just gonna roll right on into this. Um, oh yeah, Cole, I suppose maybe I should give you a little a little bit of backstory. So the entire idea for this podcast is to force myself to have uh, deeper conversations than I normally would, uh, because I notice I have a bit of a streak from my dad's uh, genes that caused me to uh, not have. Deep friendship. So I don't know. Uh, Scott's like the most personable wrong. guy I know. <laughs> he <laughs> he's, just he's deep. Pretty, Every he's time I talk personable. to him, <laughs> like you know, if you, if you get him talking on something that he wants to talk about, he'll go. But like, uh, there's like his his uh, his garden of friendships is approximately like uh, that one succulent you keep in your window because it mm. can't die. Um, that's kind of how my dad, uh, harvests his friendships. He's like, yeah, I got a friend. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a beautiful analogy. Mm -hmm, I thought so. All right. <laughs> so, so first question, Cole, uh, I'm just going to start at the top of the little, yeah, I'll start at the top of the list here. We're going to, we're going to go right in. What's your biggest insecurity? Hmm. You know, it, I feel like it changes year to year and has changed a lot lately but obviously uh you know my weight i used to be a thin man I now you. i'm not a thin man anymore <laughs> that that bothers me a little bit and i can't do like athletic things as well anymore um, i gotcha that and i would say probably just the fear of people not actually liking me i, I don't know why mm -hmm. but i don't even like believe my friends like me sometimes Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that's, kind of, that's kind of an interesting one. You carry you carry yourself particularly well. I think uh, I think you're good at not like you know making it obvious that you're insecure about something, right? Like you got that hard Minnesotan Midwestern oh, uh, yeah. self-deprecating humor that you roll out. Like, yeah, I'm a fat guy. Oh, that's that uh, is 100 percent how oh, I yeah. deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I make all, all kinds of room. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There we go. I had to close my eyes. Are, already well. that boring? We're like four minutes in. <laughs> oh no, the open door was just like throwing me off. Like <laughs> nobody's actually home right now, but it was just like I that's, don't know. That's fair. The, the opportunity that was getting me. But yeah, I think uh I think that's that's kind of an interesting one. I don't know if I would have actually guessed your weight because uh because of that kind of self deprecating humor. That makes I, you know. Yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I still think it's funny when I make fun of it, but <laughs> Yeah, I think I, deep down, I, that's that's something that I've been that I've been think that I've been uh, thinking about too, like the past year or two, really. Because uh, um, uh, who is it? Uh, one of one of Debbie's cousins had this thing where she was like forcing herself to stop doing self deprecating humor because she like went to therapy. Her therapist was like, like, why are you, you just constantly me, yeah. down on yourself? And I was like, you know what? That kind of makes sense. I mean. You know, I mean, I like making those kind of jokes, but there's def there's definitely a point where I take it too far, and it's like, you know, 
the butt of every joke is going to be myself. Uh. Yeah, that's that's true. And I mean, you're probably thinking about it a lot more if you're making jokes about it. But Ooh, dang, Cole, did you see that? I just took a sip of this yeah. and I labeled the camera perfectly. Thank you, Cole. Oh, there's the other Cole, <laughs> your alter ego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Popping in here, you'll probably see some cats as well. <laughs> it's all it's all it's, good. I it's mean, a party in this house all the time. No worries. I warned my hundreds and hundreds of viewers that uh, the production value may be a little lower because of your shared living situation. You know, no, no worries. That's good. Um, they all I, know. <laughs> I, I'll, I have to thank thank everyone. You know, for dealing with that. All of, <laughs> all of them. I like it. I like it. All right. Let me let me get a let me get a, a, co a co good corollary off that one because this. Uh, let me find out. Hey, there's cat. Roll here. Gotcha. Oh yeah, actually, one question, one corollary off uh, off of that. Um, the so like you're kind of you're kind of ins insecure about your about your weight off and on. I'm I'm wondering is a lot like because like you're like a relatively active guy, you know, like you do like yeah. some sports and stuff. So it's got to be just the genetics from your dad's side, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it certainly doesn't help. <laughs> I mean, but, it always yeah. amazes me too because your dad, like he were he he like he's a like a hard hard labor kind of guy out working all the time but that's just kind of the body type i guess i yeah and my grandpa so his dad is mm -hmm. on like this extremely strict diet and he's like one of the most active you know grandparents that mm -hmm. i know mm -hmm. and he's on like a diet or he can't eat red meat he can't have like sugar he can't have like any of that stuff he just like eats chicken and that's like it and chicken and veggies wow. and yeah uh, i don't know and he's huh. got a pretty similar shape so interesting i guess uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's probably just one of those we all, things. We all... like, like it's a, it's like healthy for you, you know, kind of, kind of a thing. Like just the way your body it could be. is, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, but it's we all eat pretty unhealthy, other than him too. So I mean, gotcha. That does it. When I when I get into it, I'm on another big kick here. I go up and down like a load. It's hard to buy clothes. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> because like, I go, I, my weight fluctuates between like. 30 pounds every few months um, wow that's that's pretty that, that's pounds. that's impressive i can't even imagine because what's that what's that like i mean i've been the same weight since like sophomore year of high school so i go up and down a lot Interesting. <laughs> i never like i never get back into shape but it's just less out of shape gotcha. <laughs> and well, then it gets know, worse again and then i go up higher and then i come back down and it's like slowly going up so we'll see i'm on a pretty big kick right now but i gotcha Nice, but yeah, like with your like with uh with that body type too, I think I I think it can be pretty it can be pretty deceptive. Like I I uh, just this last uh, this last Sunday I played uh, ultimate frisbee. I'm in a yeah. I'm in a fall league up here, and there was this one guy, and you got you know you like pick the one to guard. And so I saw this guy over there, and he was he was he had a bit of a beer gut, you know. This guy was there, and like okay, I'll I'll guard him. This is gonna this mm -hmm. is gonna work out. This will be a lot better. That man had endless stamina. <laughs> he was going so hard. It's it's the beer belly, man. If they don't have it anywhere else, then it's just plain. You gotta beer. watch out. <laughs> like, let me tell you, I don't know. That man was hiding like Titan legs under those sweatpants or something. He was just ah. Oh, I'd like to think that I'm kind of like that, but I I don't know. I, I haven't done a physically taxing sport mm. in a while, so yeah. When I unless golf, unless you can count golf, but. Oh, gotcha. I, you Probably know, but you know, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I call it a sport, but not a physically taxing one. I'd say. I'd say that. Mm, yeah. Interesting. That's fair. Cool. But yeah, it's the uh, like we started that fall league like three weeks ago for frisbee, and mm -hmm. I'm like, like I never run or anything unless I'm doing a sport. I just can't do it. I hate running. Um, yeah, it sucks. But when I but when I'm doing frisbee, I can do it. But the, this was the first week that I like. I finally didn't feel like I was gonna die after the first seven minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's been it was it's been the last two were a bit rough all right nice Sweet. all right let me roll through next question cole what would you in middle school think about you now um that's a good question i don't even know what middle school me used to think i was I'm, i was very different in middle school i feel like you know I'm not like a rebel or anything, but I think middle school me would still think of me kind of poorly just because I drink some alcohol. I've done oh. some uh, recreational activities that I wouldn't have approved <laughs> of back in the day. Yeah, yeah I was a very straight and narrow small child. I suppose. Um, yeah. But 
I don't know. I'm not like, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not bad now, but it would probably be enough for her. I'd be like, oh, man, where did I go wrong? I do. I got to stop. I do remember. This was, this was actually one of, one of my one of my other questions uh, here. I asked, uh, where did I have this written down? It was, um, when you when did you get less competitive and intense? Because I remember like middle school, <laughs> goal, like fourth through eighth grade, you were super ultra mega competitive. And all oh, yeah, this, totally. and I guess maybe like when you went to high school is when it changed. Like, what do you think on that? Yeah, actually, it's funny that you noticed that because I made a very, I like made a huge effort to stop being that way because everybody uh -huh. said I was that way. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm awful sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was extremely competitive. Uh, no, <laughs> you know, some of the girls used to say that that would really bother me. When the girls said it, I didn't really care if you guys said it, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, maybe I need to stop. But yeah, yeah I don't know. It was probably it was probably right around the beginning of high school. Nice, that that's like, cool. Yeah, that that was actually that like a like a conscious effort that you that you yeah, did there. Like I like it totally was. Yeah, that's, that's why I always like it really cool when people are like, you know, when the, there's like an introspective moment and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm kind of an asshole. Like, uh, <laughs> like I've, I've had a couple of those in my life and both times I'm like, damn, Brian, I'm, I'm impressed that you managed to pull that one through. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously it's not gone. Certain people still bring it out of me. Certain yeah. activities will. I, I don't think I'm nearly as bad as I used to be, but gotcha. it still yeah. comes out. <laughs> yeah, I used to... I don't know. I I I think I I think I kicked it out of my out of myself a little earlier because I I used to have this really weird competitive streak, and it would be either I was super competitive about something or I would just completely cut myself off from it and not decide to do anything. Like you remember speed stacks uh, by chance? I, I, oh, of course I remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I had speed stacks. I was going hardcore. I like knew the cycle before everybody else and all that stuff. I was king of the world. And then you got hyper competitive, and Tyler got hyper competitive, and suddenly I I didn't have the record in fourth grade anymore, and I was like, yes, this isn't my thing anymore. Uh, I'm out, boys. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound like you were too competitive. Yeah, it's like I, mm, someone else is good at this now. It's not my thing anymore. But, man, like it was like I don't know. I was so competitive yeah. that I would actively not do it. Like I remember we'd have like gym class, and a after a certain point, oh, I literally I, yep, stopped I participating. Like I just I would just sit around. Right, because you didn't want to lose. Right, like, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, I, I was I so competitive, exactly by wouldn't play, which is just, which is just weird. Thankfully, I think that was a pretty short period. But yeah, I actually think probably being friends with you back then might have been one of might, might have stopped me from being so competitive because it's like, oh, he's he's gonna be the competitive guy. I can, I, I, oh I can yeah, just be the, I'll take I can, it over. I can be the, I can be the real non-competitive <laughs> guy, <laughs> the nonchalant guy. I feel like you just had like streaks of competitiveness, I, like. Just like oh, out yeah. of the blue, you just get really competitive about like, that's a that's a something. that's a hundred percent right. Like, like I, I, just I never remember had basketball. A thing. You yeah. you weren't ever really that competitive, but then occasionally you just got in the zone and you'd get so I don't know. Oh yeah, get so hyped up during the game. <laughs> man, I loved. Oh man, like one of like one of my biggest regrets from like uh, from like high school and towards the end of our time at St. Paul's and Truman was like, I really wish I would have like kept playing basketball or do some sports because looking back like right now i'd love it so much like playing in that frisbee league and everything is one of my favorite things and i just i feel like that's something i really could have like actually done and been been half decent but, right like if uh, you were like actually doing it <laughs> exactly like I, yeah <laughs> uh, it, was so, it was it was so long. like like if i if i had the confidence to actually do it I know I could have actually done something decent, yeah. but well, and we always played at like your place. We always like that's what we did yeah. when we were hanging out. We played basketball and we played we catch the football. Yeah, man, so... I love it. You, you, my favorite was though because it would be you and me versus your two little brothers because, <laughs> because it was extremely fair. It was it was extremely fair because you're all sports maniacs, and uh, uh, usually I was uh, I was pretty pretty shite at whatever we were doing. I so. I mean. Zach was like probably what ten when we were like in June in like fourteen. Yeah, you would have been like ten. I feel like I feel like you were doing okay against my brothers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was on B squad with him. I think we were actually interchangeable for a bit there. <laughs> Amazing. All right, let me roll. Let's see. Next question I got up here. What do I want to grab? Uh, uh, oh, hey, here's a pretty decent one. Uh, okay, uh, what's your biggest regret from growing up so like pre-college ish 
Uh, yeah, that one. I, it kind of goes hand in hand with my, I think, my competitiveness and my intensity. Um, yeah, this is something that still comes up, and I think it has been my biggest regret for a while. And that's just kind of looking back how I treated people that were closer to me. I think mm -hmm. if I got intense, I could say things that I 100% didn't mean. Um, to friends, I remember saying some stuff to you that I'm like, man, I was just being kind of a dick. I, why was I doing that? You were my best friend. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know why uh, I said it. Um, I remember one time in, I think it was, it might have been seventh grade or eighth grade or something like, I'd I'd come over to your over to your house and then I and I left and you and uh, you texted me like a day later and you're like, hey Brian, does it like bother you and like when like me and me or my family make fun of you? <laughs> you're like talking at dinner or something and then you realize you're yeah. like, oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I'm glad that I, I said something about it, I guess. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I you must not have it must not have hurt you too much if you if you continued to hang out with me, but Oh yeah. But I, I feel bad. And like mostly like ex girlfriend stuff. That, that, yeah. Some of that was I, I know I was pretty rough. Um because I was really rough on myself. I took breakups really bad when I was younger, Oof. so and, Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. It didn't reflect well on things that I have said. Yeah, because you got so. cause, yeah, you start like especially for like you know our area in the Midwest, you started dating pretty early, like fourteen. Yeah, seventh grade, I think. Something like that. So yeah, um, yeah, <sighs> it was a bunch of immaturity. I don't know. Yeah, I feel gotcha. bad about it, and it got to the point when when I realized later on, I was like, man, it's way too late to apologize. It'd be weird yeah, if I hit it'd up just like be weird my thirteen year old back. girlfriend and was like, hey, sorry, I sorry, I said some mean stuff to you. I, if you even remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so, yeah, it's just know. maturity. I'm def I'm definitely glad that I didn't really date anybody until I was like sixteen or something like that. Mm -hmm. I might have been seventeen actually. So I'm glad I was a little older because I definitely would have, I definitely would have fucked somebody <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> like I hope I didn't <laughs> fuck somebody up with it. I don't know. I I feel like I was, I don't know. I guess yeah. I don't. Like I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's any like la real lasting harm just because everybody at that point is pretty emotionally immature. We, we've all got <laughs> exactly. We've yeah. all got. We're all pretty terrible. But like, oh, like it's it would it it, it could have been yeah. rough, right? I mean, my type of for girls is apparently uh, mousy girls with anxiety. Uh, so that I don't think that would have translated very well. So a, what a type. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's. I don't know. I it just like I said. I think most of that came from that intensity that I had. I, I had big emotions. So. Yeah, I I, de I definitely <laughs> I definitely remember remember that. I remember one specific. I think it might have been like sixth grade, seventh, no, probably seventh grade. I think we were playing basketball, like pick up pick up basketball at recess, and I I I, I was point guard. You know my skills, my skills. I was killing mm -hmm. it. And then uh, you just like grabbed Little my sweat, my sweatshirt's uh, sleeve, and you like spun me in a circle and I fell down on the ground and then you took the ball and went the other direction. I was so pissed. <laughs> uh, I like, I came charging <laughs> at you and lowered my shoulder. Like I was, I was going all in for a tackle and I ended up just uh, like, you lowered your shoulder. I like bounced on top of you for a second. It was, it, 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 it got a little intense, but, uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. Let me see. <laughs> uh, the next one here. Oh, this is on a, this is a completely different uh, switcherooski here, but uh, no, this one's really open ended. I don't even know. I don't even know if you'll have an answer to this one. But what do you think would have been different if, like, you know, one of your siblings was a girl, right? Because like growing up in a household with like three boys, I think is like a very specific vibe. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, <laughs> I, it always makes me laugh to think like back um, and like people would tell my mom, I know she's told us like we were the family that everybody knew because we were so rowdy and yeah. we were just running all over the place all the time. I remember um, Jonah's mom, <laughs> she had so she had Jonah and uh, his brother. <laughs> and I guess when we came to the church. They weren't the loud family anymore, and hey. she was very glad that all of like everything went to us because we were so loud and rowdy. So I don't. I think it would have been pretty different just because we wouldn't have been able to build off each other as much. Mm. I think if Jess was a girl, it would have done a lot more because Jess was the one that I got a lot more rowdy with. I guess we oh, would fight yeah. a lot more. I never really fought with Zach, and we didn't really do 
like a whole mm. lot growing up like that would probably have changed there would have been a lot less like sports to play which would have been kind of sad i guess i i miss those a days bit. a lot yeah that's a but, good point I, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it would change like dynamically too much if Zach was, because he was young enough, yeah. younger than me enough that it didn't. It wouldn't probably affect it too much. But I would have got probably in a lot less trouble if Jess was a girl. You know, that's a, that's a solid point you get there. I feel. <laughs> I feel like if Je- like if Jess had been a girl, hypothetically speaking, that like like my like I th- I think the real like dark horse of this alternate timeline is your dad. I think I think with a daughter, that man's a teddy bear. I, I don't like... Oh, totally. He would be 100%. the 180 on a daughter, I feel like. Right, because like, I, um, I, I come over to your house, right? And, it's and you know, there, there's, there's just a certain vibe there. You know, it's kind, kind, very similar to my dad in, in some ways. But, like, you know, with three boys in that, in that house, he was on top yeah. of things. And I feel I, like with a girl there, there would have been a lot more... He it would have been, been so mushy. different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I just remember... Well, yeah, because, like, people would come over, like, people were afraid of my dad. My friends were afraid of my dad. Oh, yeah. And, like, he never, I don't think he truly gave reasons to be other than him being strict with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think he, like, ever probably just truly did anything, but I think it was just that air. And, like, my friends just knew he was strict. Yeah, it was, de- it was definitely and... just, like, just like a vibe, <laughs> right? Because you, like, come over and it's like, okay, this is the dad of these three brothers. Right, yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> because I, I remember like that time like i broke your van's window i was like crapping myself going to tell your <laughs> <That's> dad <laughs> one of my favorite stories and i still don't know why i made you tell him but t- it's so funny to me <laughs> i was like you're not gonna get in trouble if you tell him i'm gonna get my butt kicked if i tell him so you go tell him because it was you it'll <laughs> be I, fine I, I remember i go i go tell him but then we, we can walk out of the house and first thing he does he takes one step out he's like cole what'd you do <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that was the same with your family. I always thought I did stuff. I got blamed for all kinds of Charlie's things with your family. <laughs> He'd break the hoop and then I'd get blamed for it. Hmm? Get... Oh, at my house? Hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I definitely remember that. I, Your could, parents could... were mad at me because the hoop was broken, and I think Charlie said it was me. And then they believed it because mm. Kay is like, mm, that rowdy Cole. That rowdy Cole. I, I 100% you. remember that because I was like, oh, man, that's... Interesting. <laughs> I was Damn. like, I 100% didn't break that hoop. <laughs> I do remember that broken hoop. And honestly, I, li- I liked it a lot better broken because then if I lowered it all the way, I could dunk on the right side because it was an uh, inch and a half lower. <laughs> it was, it was lower. <laughs> I thought you could dunk it on that thing. Could you not? Um, I could, but I had to like train up to it because when I like started, mm. like I like I couldn't. But when the, after after it was broken and lowered, I went. Oh, so much like, easier. Like, yeah, oh, it was awesome. No, I I remember. I I specifically remember that because I remember. Uh, I your mom never said anything to me about it. It was all through you. Oh, but... <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that, that, that definitely sounds like something me and my brother, me, me and my brother probably did. Like I, I don't, like I, I can't remember, so I'm gonna pretend that I'm, uh, that I'm blaming. And maybe it this, was, but... maybe it was you and him. But you uh, told I wouldn't me be surprised him. if both of us were like, oh yeah, it was cool. It was, it was a little close fault. It wasn't, it wasn't anything we did. It, it sounded like Kay was just always watching me, just like, what's he gonna break now? <laughs> Yeah, my 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 mom would no no yeah yeah from her side that was definitely that probably didn't exist but I could definitely see that me and Charlie blaming you for quite a bit that would uh that was just, it I, makes I it think that did happen and whatever I guess that's <laughs> that's just how it goes <laughs> nice all right let me, see, let me roll up another one here another question or two we can probably take a little intermission let me see here uh oh here we go okay so this one this one kind of since we're in that same period of life that I imagine this is from, uh, what, uh, what would you say is the most formative time or event in your life? You know, it could be like an epiphany moment or just like a time in your life where you learned a whole lot or stuff like that. It could be multiple. It doesn't have to be anything big. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have any big moments. Gotcha. I think in general, I'm a, I'm a pretty boring vanilla guy, <laughs> but if I had to choose, mm-hmm. um, my time would probably be like the end of high school, beginning of college. I think that like, mm-hmm. I, for no even like particular reason other than I think it started to form the personality, um, just, uh, I don't know, my morals, my like everything that I am still today. That's kind of when it yeah. came to be was like that time, which I guess is like you're moving out. It's probably the same for like. 
yeah, ninety percent of yeah, people. Yeah, I imagine it's a lot of people. I'd, I'd say that's pretty. That's pretty. Especially big like too. yeah, people who don't have like a real big moment in their life. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, yeah. I'd probably I'd probably agree with that. Probably for myself too. Probably like the last two years of high school, I'd say those are probably yeah most memorable. Like like I I think about it like maybe like you know my top my life before that I've been like you, you're like de you're like developing and you f and you figure stuff out but like right mm -hmm. around then I think it's kind of when it all starts to kind of harden into place and coalesce and you're like oh okay this this is this is the human yep. that I'm going to be moving forward yep. this is this is me for the rest of my life mm -hmm. maybe kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right I have no I have no character development after the age of 19 I like that's it, it. <laughs> I, I turn 19 and then that's me forever <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Like the, uh, cause like I, I think I, I think I'm pretty I'm pretty lucky with how with how everything coalesced those those last two years because I I I, uh, I really stomped out my uh, my low self esteem streak. I really just 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 shat on that my last two nice. years of high school. I was like, nah, this this ain't gonna be a thing. This, <laughs> this is, this, I can't keep this anymore, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really really glad that left. Mm. <laughs> No, totally. No, and I, yeah, that's that's a big change I can see with you too. I think that was when you like came out of your shell. I want to say because mm -hmm. you were pretty shy. You were, you know, I could talk to you yeah. just fine and do stuff with you, but I know it was harder for other people. And yeah, um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I think you just became so much more willing to like try things, and like you became yeah. like a really outgoing person after that. So yeah, like I like I talked like <laughs> I talked about this on the, on the last podcast with Zach a bit too, but I had this thing like probably until. I think maybe seventh or eighth grade is when I started when I started to lose it. But I, like the thing that I had in my brain was like, okay, Brian, you're not good at things, so your thing is gonna be not doing things. And so I'd be I feel like, like, I remember you saying that. I may have literally said. I'm like, pretty sure you have told me that. I was <laughs> like in active, the time. <laughs> yeah, I was like actively like, if there's an extracurricular activity, I'm not going to do it. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go above and beyond at all. I'm going to uh, exist, and other, my speciality is gonna be that I'm not special in any way. What a fantastic <laughs> way to look! At life. It was I, horrific. I want to say it was like when we were trying to get you to go out for basketball, and you're like, I can't. And then I yeah. was, I don't know. I feel like that's kind actually of what you said when I like tried to get you to like do a sport or something. Yeah, there's there's actually a, a, a pivoting moment because I because remember eighth grade. I actually I was going to do basketball. I was I was like I, you you like convinced me to do basketball and then like on the day of the first practice was when I had like I'd gone to the emergency room the night before and got a lumbar puncture mm -hmm. and so I was just in pain all day I had to I, I rode back home yeah. I wasn't gonna go to practice and that just like shot it right in the foot I don't know what happened there it was ugh. I, I vaguely remember that I guess I don't remember why you had done but I remember you like I thought you had like gone to one practice and then that was just it. Uh, but maybe you didn't go to any. I remember I you were going to play, and then you just did so little, and then did it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. Like, I was oh, going finally to, play. Got to go. And then the first practice, I had that lumbar puncture, and I was out. And it just like, I, like it killed all my momentum for it. It was nasty. I picked mm -hmm. out a jersey and everything. It was maybe that's yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking of because I, I know you were like it was so close. We almost had you. You could have. Oh, those were the the. I don't know. That was yep. the only sports team I was on that went anywhere. You know, the good old eighth grade state that nobody else participates in <laughs> yeah. hey, that, hey that that was quite was quite the run that was a storied run for truman sports let me tell you yeah not even making it to the consolation match heck yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep all right let me see let me roll here i had a, i had one more lined up here before we take a break it was Oh yeah, this is oh yeah, this is this is this is kind of this is like a, a lighter question. So like, how do you find that like the shift to adulthood has like changed your your hobbies or how you spend your free time and stuff like that? Like, do you still read um, books? Like, you, like, you oh, mean has erased all of my free time and <laughs> hobbies? Because <laughs> I feel like that's what happened. You got <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. So actually, it's funny you bring up reading books. I I haven't read a book for like years. I finally joined a book club because I was like, I'm going to read books now. Nice. And I've read like five in the last like month and a half, probably. Dang. And I I've been like really focusing on trying to learn how to read fast so that I can read more books in a short amount of time. So like <laughs> I've been making a conscious effort to learn how to free, read fast because I was like reading again. I was like, oh my god, I read so slow now. <laughs> oh gotcha. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So I I have been doing that a lot. Um, 
I don't know. Otherwise, uh, I guess beer brewing. I couldn't do that when I was little. So it's true. Being older has opened up that hobby for me. That's true. You, know, you do just... open up some more, some more stuff you can get into when you get like yeah. you know, some disposable income, and uh, you know yeah. when you're over eighteen and twenty. Yeah, when I'm when I'm of age and can like, or even care about making alcohol. Well, yeah, then I got my my sake and my mead going, so that's cool. Making, oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Okay. All kinds of alcohol. All right, here, 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 we, here we go, Cole. All right, time for Sake Corner on the No Life Jackets mm, podcast okay. here. I, so tell, tell, me, tell me a little bit about, about Sake, right? And I'm pretty much a new beer, so you got to explain like, the differences between that and brewing beer like a five-year-old. Mm, uh, I'll, I'll do what I can. So basically, Sake, um, you might want to get a pen. Pencil will write down this whole list of ingredients. It's water and rice. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. <laughs> did they start making it's... that by accident <laughs> i don't know man there's a lot of stuff okay so <laughs> mead uh very basic it's pretty much the same it's just you put water you put honey you heat it up and then you let it sit that's it um sake right now so i was going to do it last night but i did a bunch of reading and apparently i made the moto um so that's what i did last night and you basically start off with two types of rice you put them in water. One of the rice is stripped of like the husk and everything, and that actually it produces a mold and an en- I think a mold and an enzyme maybe, or a mold that produces an enzyme that then breaks down the other type of rice into um, into a substance that the yeast can then turn into alcohol. So it's a little bit more complicated with sake, mm. and also it's like three weeks of like every twelve hours needing to either stir it, add more rice. So I, I'm starting with like a thing that's like this big in my fridge right now, yeah. and like as it goes, it's gonna turn into like I think like two gallons is what I'm set up for. So dang, I, yeah, I don't know. I I don't want to talk too much more about it because. I'll start saying stuff that's not right because <laughs> gotcha, I know that's, very that's little about. So like, so like brewing beer, it's like a thing. You're like, okay, uh, today I'm gonna like start all the brew, then I'm gonna let it sit for weeks, yeah. and then eventually I'll have it. I don't have to do anything in the meantime. This is like kind of like an active sort of thing. Um, no, kind of. They all have to ferment for weeks, so sake actually takes longer than beer to make and ferment. That one is just like an active, like constantly adding new things to make sure the fermentation goes right. Beer is like you spend hours of your day, you make it, and then you throw it in a bucket for three weeks, and then it's good <laughs> three weeks after that. So gotcha. It's a little yeah. different. There's a lot more that goes into brewing day, but then you don't even have to think about it after that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Mead, cool. you don't do anything on brewing day, and you also don't have to do anything while it ferments. It's pretty sweet. Dang. Yeah, Debbie's been, been getting know. into meat a little bit. There's a meadery in like White Bear Lake or something that mm. she's that she's hit up a couple times. I don't know if I'm a mead Maybe guy. I'll... It's yeah, I, I don't know about it. Honestly, it's all right, I think. I mean I'd rather have beer. I'm a I'm a beer man. I just wanna I'd make probably, stuff. I'd prob I'd probably probably agree. Like I think, you know, maybe I think I've been thinking about mead wrong because, like, because like people who make mead also make beer, and you know, I kind of had it lined up where it's like, okay, mead, mead, and beer; these things occupy the same go place. together. Yeah, but that's kind of what I thought before. Yeah, but they don't like occupy the same place, right? A beer is just like it does; it's not nope. sweet, so you can dr- you can drink a reasonable volume of it, and you can just mm. drink it all day. But I think a mead almost takes maybe like if I substituted mead in for like when I might have like wine or something. I feel like that's that. exactly it's literally yeah it's like literally a honey wine and it has like the same flavor profiles as wine often gets uh like the dryness you have at the end is often pretty similar to like a red wine or something oh I got you um so yeah the process is uh, it's a little easier than wine but yeah it's definitely way closer to wine than than it is to beer which yeah I always thought because you know I don't know the Vikings they drink ale and mead right so I assume yeah, they were the same I don't know why I thought this like I, 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 probably, I, I blame the Redwall books they always uh, had a lot of delicious stuff that yeah I, I mean I had the same thought so maybe it's a thing it's they're teaching us wrong in school they need to in they need, school they, they need, need to, to give us tasting classes so we know our alcohols before we look like idiots <laughs> you know random tangent on that you know how you know how you always hear people being like Man, they don't need to teach you algebra and geometry in school. They need to teach you about budgeting and all this. And it's yeah. like, what makes you think I'm going to pay any attention in that class either? All right? <laughs> it's not – this, yeah. this isn't a thing. Like, <laughs> Honestly, I probably would have paid less attention. But yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I, I think it's kind of a weird point to make. Yeah. And it, also, it, like – It gets me every time. I feel like if you're at a school that's not, like, 
20 people per class, you're going to have finance classes. Yeah, I, <laughs> you're right. I mean, we yeah, were like, both at a school that only had 20 people. I think we maybe still had a finance class. I never yeah. took it. I yeah, never would have wanted so. to take it. Yeah, even at, I don't know. Yeah, Martin Luther, my class size was 10. We had a class on personal finance and all that. Like, <laughs> I, I guess we had 60, so. but you know, Like, this we is like in the... schools. I think people, like, forget it because it, it's probably a shorter class than a whole algebra curriculum, but it happens. Well, like, yeah, if you have, like, a finance class, you could learn taxes, budgeting. I don't even know what else. That's the two they kind of they kind of focus yeah, like, on. Like yeah, you could like the, you could learn that in a week. Ex exactly. <laughs> like the stuff you need to know to be a normal human is minuscule, right? Like other people will take care of anything more complicated than this. But to be a normal member of society, you have to know basically nothing. <laughs> I, I I mean yeah, I made a budget and I didn't have to like Google how make budget. I was just like, hmm, I have this much money for food. And that was yeah. like it. You just kind of put it there. <laughs> or you like just Google online. You're like, hey, uh, budgeting, how to do that? Uh, yeah. what's the, what's the, people, what's the, I think it's just people just don't like algebra. And they're like, why am I taking this? I think so. I think I it's think more, that's more rage right. at classes they sucked at. <laughs> and act like you can, <laughs> Or oh, even just I, classes that you dislike, I guess. I mean, I, you know, I have a little bit of a bias considering, you know, I went into a science and uh, science. Yeah, and I, suppose I, I suppose I definitely do, too. We, we're, we're definitely both biased here. But yeah. like. People are always like, oh, man, when I take these classes, I sucked at. Let's take one that actually matters in life. It's like you wouldn't have paid attention to that either, you dumbass. You're sitting yeah. in there. You're, the, you're that kid who is, who's eating, who's spitting chew into a bottle in the back of class while the teacher's turning their back, okay? You weren't doing shit anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's me every time. Gotcha. All right. Well, we'll take a short intermission here. A little potty break. Let me hit the button here. Damn, I'm going to have to get a beer. Whoo, darn tootin'. All right, we are back recording. Now, Cole, as the expert podcaster I am, I noticed our audio on both our sides was a little loud about 10 minutes before the break, so I adjusted it on the fly, and I'm sure our viewers are loving me right now. Oh, no, it's so just, now, no, it's, now, it's now they can't hear us. Wife, so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to, now do I have to yell? Yeah, just keep going. No, for it? <laughs> no okay. I, got, I got it to a reasonable range here. We'll, <laughs> we'll, right, cool. we'll just gain out when we scream, which works out perfectly. You might have to do some editing, I'm sorry. Editing, oh man, <laughs> I hate I hate editing. Oh, I got I actually I gotta show you. I'll, I'll show you something after after we're we're done here. I gotta show you this this horrific. Oh yeah, off, I made. off the books. Cool. Yeah, off the books. I don't, I don't want mm -hmm. to see this. All right, <laughs> <laughs> so jumping right back right back into this, we're gonna we're gonna flip around a, a little here, and we're we're gonna we're gonna get a little future oriented call. All right. So, oh great, I love future. Yeah, I hate man. thinking about the future. <laughs> well you're gonna hate this podcast all right <laughs> so we'll we'll start off not too far in the future but what are like what are your current goals that you're on and we may have covered some of this already i mm. suppose but like what are what are like the current goals I, you have that you're working on uh currently my fantasy football team is really good and Dang. i want to win the championship but nice. yeah, uh, at real goals. <laughs> hey, that's a real goal, man. I play, I, when true. I play fantasy, I get way too into it. I'm a waiver wire watcher, man. I'm on. Oh my god, thing. I I had like five waiver pickups last week, and nice. yeah, that's like Early our whole waiver wire just like save me. your season. This is when you make <laughs> bank on waiver wire. It's so good. Yeah, I don't know. It's whatever. I don't know. It's been a while since I've like really tried at it, so I have to like get back in with college. I didn't, but yeah, I don't know. That's nice. that's not a real goal of mine. It kind of is, I guess. But. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my current goals is to get back. Uh, I, we did talk about getting back into hobbies. I want to get back into music, especially and golf, because oh. music has taken a backseat for like six, seven years now. I haven't done like anything with it, and it used to be like all I did. Um, so I'd like to get back into that. Now I suck at it. I can't play my bass guitar for more than like five minutes without my fingers bleeding. Um, oh, you, you need to get gloves or something, man. I don't oh, know. Oh. Well, I, I don't even mean like with the psoriasis. I just mean oh, like gotcha. the, those huge blisters you get if you don't play long enough. Oh, you could get my, what well, my dad shred. does is uh, he gets flat wound strings for his bass. Hmm. Because usually that sounds... he's playing guitar and so his calluses are in the wrong oh, spot. Oh, sure. Yeah, that sounds like the cheap way out. I need to get real calluses. I need to be a real. <laughs> I need to player. earn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then golf is another one that I'd like to get into. So I I went golfing like once this summer. That's one I want. I want to get back into though. I like nice. I like the golf. So I could I, I, know, just... I could I could see myself get get into golf. Like what I like I like doing right now 
is uh, we we only did it once this summer too. But just uh, we go just go to the driving range and just hit with random mm-hmm. different clubs, trying to figure out how to make decent contact because that's where my nice. level is. Uh, you're getting fun. there. Next up is the PGA Tour. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's it's I don't, it's just like if you go to the cheap courses anyway, it's really chill. Uh, mm-hmm. And just stay away from the expensive ones because that's where the assholes are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what other uh, ones can you like bring beers with? And, uh, it's real. It is really chill. I it's do a like good golf. time. I like. I I'm, gonna to, it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to fly <laughs> out there on some of them cheap, uh, cheap frontier tickets, and we're ha- we'll have to go to the driving range and golfing because that. It's just. It's, it's I would be chill. so down for that. And then we, you know, we could do some Colorado stuff too if you come. If you want, I mean, if you want yeah, to like yeah. go hiking or like whitewater rafting. Gotcha. And I, I know it sounds boring for. Oh no! I you, I, I I dig I you dig flatlanders. <laughs> you flatlanders. Uh, I am Air sick res- lowlanders. I am an official resident, so I. <laughs> Dang! And, once you yeah, once, once you get a couple a more fantasy anymore. books under your belt, I'm going to have to make you read uh, "The Way of Kings" by Brandon Sanderson. Um, just because there's a character in it who's from high up in the mountains, and he just talks the whole time about air sick lowlanders. Oh man, that'd be so cool! I could read that, and then I could just quote him all the time to it's like so, Midwesterners. So good. I have a, I, 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 that I, I, I read that, that I am a Miss Wet Midwesterner. <laughs> <laughs> I should say that I guess I, I don't really truly consider myself a Colorado person. So. I don't know. You I don't know. You were a you were pretty much a mountain man before you went to Colorado. You had the beard going. You're, well, you're yeah, I had, be, I had to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to make people think that I, I wasn't just moving in from somewhere else because they hate people that do that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh I don't know. I guess one more goal I had before we move on is uh, to get good at my job. Nice. I'm a junior. I'm a junior and it's uh, everybody knows more than I do and it kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, I definitely It takes me like forever to do things that they do in like a day and I'm like yeah. All right, guys. Yep. I, I, I definitely know what you mean. Yeah, you're doing like a hardware-ish type stuff like you're writing drivers right now, right? That's what you're doing. Yeah, actually, that is exactly what I'm doing, like, right now, so. Nice. But, yeah, right firmware. And then we make lasers out of them. Lasers. So. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Nice. I, don't, I don't know anything about it, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I like it. Those are solid goals. <laughs> All right. Let me see here. Where was it? Where's the other future question here? It was. Ah, here we go. Okay, so those are like your current goals. Now, if you if you like if you look look way out on the old time horizon there, Cole, like what are mm. like what are some like like you know, like long term possibilities or things like you could like see yourself going or stuff like that from down the line, right? You know, it doesn't have to be anything concrete, obviously, but like, you know, mm. what are some what are some yeah. of those options you see down the road? I'm not really somebody who thinks that far ahead. Mm. Like I made the decision to move like to Colorado like two months before I moved out here. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha, you. I, gotcha. mm, I would like to get my doctorate. That is one thing. That is a mm. the only like concrete goal that I have. I would like to get my concrete. Uh, my concrete. I just want to get a bunch of concrete. I want um, to get my concrete, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my doctorate. Um, nice. I think that would be. I think that would be pretty cool and just kind of like end my career. Mm-hmm. As a professor, I don't want to do that for my whole career. I want to do it when I'm like 60. Yeah. I don't know. Go yeah. back to school, finish it up, just do it for 10, 15 years and retire. I think that would be cool. Uh, I don't really have too many other goals, I guess, other than. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care about getting rich and famous or anything like that. Gotcha. So, gotcha. I, I just want to make enough money, comfortably live. Yeah. I have a family, I guess. Nice, gotcha. That's so like, so be like, a family man. That's yeah. So uh... like, <laughs> along the along the lines of like of like family stuff. Like when you like hypothetically, when you when you when you've got your family here, like what like do you have like a like do you think you'll be like back in the Midwest in Minnesota, like in the city in the country? Like what do you just imagine when you think of it? Uh, I'd imagine we'll be back in the Midwest, uh, both. Me and my fiance Miranda, uh, mm. both of our families are in the Midwest. I, uh, the cities would be a big landing point. Um, mm. Probably that or Fargo would be the two. And we'll be in the city. I don't know. I, that's that's what I prefer. Gotcha. I'm not I'm not much of a country country boy. So 
country boy growing up your whole life <laughs> yeah. in the country. I boy. wasn't even a country boy. <laughs> <laughs> My friend group was specifically everyone that wasn't a country boy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's pretty much how my friend group was right. created. That is true. Yeah, I suppose I, in high in high school, you make a good point here. I, 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 everyone those. was a country person except for like my friend group, and then you had like the, I guess the odd ones out. Kind of, we were like the odd ones yeah. out, but like not as out. <laughs> well, you know, you know that's an interesting shift because when I because when I think back, like you know, it wasn't until like junior year of high school or something that my parents moved out to the country, and like. When now, now I'm up in the cities and surrounded by other people, I'm like, oh yeah, middle of nowhere, out in the country, like right. But if I but if I was back down in Blue Earth, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm a city slicker. That that's how, that's how, that's how you do it, right? Like it's such a from the, yeah, it's like a relative thing. Ah, I did I actually yeah. hadn't thought of that. I don't know. It's and even so, I just like moving off to college. I feel that I enjoyed city life more i i don't want to be a city slicker i guess i want to be yeah. a suburb person yeah gotcha. i'll be one yeah. of those just yeah like you're not like you don't want to like live in a loft downtown guys. but you no. want to be like near things yeah yeah i want to have like events to go to i want to be able yeah. to go to sporting events i want to be able to do that kind of stuff but yeah also not be super crowded and not have it be super expensive to live in a crap hole yep yep it's true yeah, it's uh, no. it's it's definitely at this point, it's a pretty hard sell for uh for us to ever move out of the cities either. At this point, like, it, like at least anywhere without it, without like driving distance ish, you know, more than an hour, that, that'd be a yeah. real tough sell. That's yeah, I'm really enjoying being in Denver here. There's so much stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. I, I all the concerts, even like post COVID here, not a lot of people are touring yet, but there's still mm -hmm. so, so many more than even just like Fargo. Yeah, I'd imagine. Probably comparable, yeah. like what the cities would be, but probably just, I'd, I'd actually imagine, probably a bit prob more. Yeah, probably more than than the cities probably generally. I has. think Denver's like the destination if you're going to be inland. Yeah, they, I think they it, like to hit the coasts a lot, but if they come inland for one place, it would probably yeah, be Denver. Yeah, Denver's a Denver's <laughs> a big leg. I, I'd say you know it's more it like the culture of Denver is much more like going to have a show there as opposed to the Minneapolis. So. Yeah, we got Red Rocks, so that's pretty cool. For sure. I haven't gone yet because it, it is expensive. But I'm going to go say Calio next next year. We almost saw Leonard Skinner. That would have been pretty cool. Oh, that would have been dank. It was like 140 bucks though, so. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want to see him that well, much. No, last concert, I tried yet. to get tickets to. I tried to get tickets to the Big Time Rush reunion tour for me and my oh, sister. <laughs> Okay, well, I I would hope that's for your sister, right? Uh, yeah, totally. Just for her. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Man, that would have been so dank. Like, oh, my gosh. I, I, I'd be so there. Oh. I love, I love, I love I, that was, so like, dang. your sister's not even, like, younger than my siblings. And I feel like Big Time Rush was, like, after my brothers were. It was, de it was definitely after. -ish. I think she was, let's see, because she's four years younger than me, so she's. I think she's a year older than Zach, maybe, or something like that. Yeah, maybe. I think that sounds right. Yeah, something like <laughs> that. But, uh, but yeah, let me let me tell you. I don't know what it was. I was definitely too old for it, but that was like my guilty pleasure show back in the day, man. Mm. I just, I just Honestly, the show wasn't that bad. I had, I did see it a couple times, and like... The show slaps. It was, it was, it was better than like some of the other stuff. Yeah, I, for sure. I wouldn't say it was that good, but... Oh, it's it's definitely my nostalgia know. goggles purely. Nothing oh, else. Mine, like. mine was definitely iCarly. So I've that's been true. That's a I've that's been, a big I've one. been watching the new iCarly. It's not that great, but actually, it, so I watched a, I watched a few episodes. I think I'm like two or three in or something or something like that. I'm sl I'm slow burning it just uh, when I re feel really nostalgic. But it's really interesting to me because like the skeleton of the show is exactly the same as the old iCarly. They mm -hmm. just took all the jokes and made them like twenty one plus. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes like, they say like, the word drunk or they slip in a bad yeah, yeah. word. Yeah, Otherwise, like, it's like, the like, exact same. Yeah, like it's just like okay, we're gonna make this joke. It's gonna be deprecating to Spencer, and we're gonna take whatever joke we would have had when people were kids, and we're just going to up the explicity a little bit, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's and, exactly what it is. I'm like, I watch this. I'm like, this is so like, totally a Nickelodeon show. It just it's, got some bad words. It's it's just so interesting <laughs> to me how they did that. Uh, like, 
I can't think of another example where people have been like, okay, we're going to take the exact formula here. And like, I almost feel like they script it as a kid's show and then substitute in the adult jokes. I, that's like, exactly it, what it feels it's, like. It's and so I don't know. interesting. I watch I it. Know. I know it's bad, but I still watch it because, yeah. I don't know. 100%. And, the, and the, the acting is still about a Nickelodeon level actor. You know, um, hey, good, good. Well, they wanted to keep the continuity. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't want to. <laughs> You can't shock us. You can't make it think it's a new show. It's, exactly. it's literally exactly. the same show. <laughs> they don't have some of the, the good characters back, though. You know, Sam and it's Gibby. It's true. It's true. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see if they come back for a special reunion episode. But who mm. knows? All right, let Pretty me go. Sad. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so we're talking about the future here. We touched, we touched on it briefly, but you're, you're getting married, my man. You're getting. That's true. You're and you're going to be there. I am going to be there now. I, now, I mean, I now, know it's a long drive to Fargo, dude. I don't care where you live. You can be in Baghdad. I'm coming. Hell yeah! I get zero shit. Yeah. You're kind. Of, you kind of have to be there. So I am. I'm, I'm, I'm legally really obligated choice, to, yeah. be, to be As there. We can trade off being best men. Exactly. Best men. We are. We are both the best men. And then uh, the later on, we're going to compete for the best men challenge. Uh, mm. We invite. Best men from every all of our friends' weddings, and we ha all have to duke it out for the. Ultimate do we fight time. each other? Can we or do we like team up? Like everybody who had each other as best men, like they are they Ooh, a pair? Like there's pre-built alliances. Wow. Yeah, well, this just you went have from to, like a, you have to have been each other's best men. Like interesting. Uh, yeah, if you pair if you pair it off, you get like you get like bonuses. Wow, this just went from like a death match to like a season of like Survivor. This is uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> just make it a season of Survivor. <laughs> The best men uh, season. The best man. I, I can call up Jeff Probst and we'll get it on. Yeah, man, we'll do it. We'll do it. But any, <laughs> but anyway, speaking speak, speaking about this, I want I wanted to, I wanted to, yeah, I ask wanted your to question. Deep, deep dive here and get a and get a visual into the mindset of uh, of of what happened because like you know making making like the decision to get married. There's there there's some you know there's some complicated gears and I wanted to get a get a zoom in here. So like what do you like what do you think like really like made you made you like think about pulling the trigger on the proposal because i because i remember i remember like like obviously you know both of both of our moms are highly invested in this um mm -hmm. so they they'd both been giving they me care. shit for a while they've been like yeah cole let me tell you he just needs to ask this girl he's ready to say i disappointed our moms i'm sorry you disappointed our moms man <laughs> 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 now my mom's psyched for you she's she's super no, that's psyched. good she better be there oh she'll be there Excuse me. So, yeah, I I mean, I, I guess we had kind of, I, we kind of had our hardships like people have. Mm. Um, and I think that's a part of the reason why we didn't right away. I don't know if you, I'm sure, I thought I told you maybe, but like when we had, we broke up for a while, like oh, in yep. the summer. Yeah, yeah, you remember that. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And it wasn't like. We've never had anything where, like, one person did something that really made the other person mad or, you know, like, no cheating stuff, no yeah. that kind of thing. I, I would like to say <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen. It was, like, 100%. We both had similar mental health issues, mm. and it was just – we were just spiraling down with each other. Mm. Um, and we kind of built off each other, and it was just really, really bad. So we decided to take a break. Um, it was, like, a real break from our relationship. Neither of us saw anyone else when we were on our breaks. To the best of my knowledge, I know I didn't, and I, I believe her when she says she didn't. But yeah, yeah so yeah. I think that honestly was really, really good for us. I think breaks mm -hmm. ninety nine percent of the time are not, but I think our situation was not so much. So when we got back together, gotcha. um, it came out, it came back really strong, and we were like really good for a while. Um, and that's kind of when I was like, okay, I know this this will work. Uh, and I think we kind of had those issues before. We had a lot of issues to work out um, mm -hmm. beforehand. So. That's kind of why it took, I think, a little while. And, you know, yeah. it kind of led to that breakup, which obviously, you know, we were going to get married and, like, do that stuff. So, mm -hmm. and it was probably, like, half a, it was probably about a year after we got back together. We were living far away, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I think that. I think that makes a lot of sense. That, like, because, like, you know, when you go, when you, when you, like, go, when you, like, you know, you actually go through on a break like that and like you both like improve, you kind of realize what mm -hmm. you're missing and like how like, oh, you know, come back with a better mindset. Yeah. The same relationship, but it's just like better. So, yeah, that makes a whole lot. Yeah, of sense. that's 
Yeah, that's yeah. We both like actually worked on the issues that caused us to take the break. Mm-hmm. Which, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know it's not very common, and I wouldn't suggest it for anyone else. But yeah, like yeah, it was don't, very, don't very take good this for us. as relationship yeah. advice. <laughs> listen, this is what you got to do. You guys got to break up when you think you're going to get married, and listen, see how it goes. Listen, we're both terrible, <laughs> terrible examples. Okay, don't don't randomly take a break and hope that and like come back later, like take a break and then propose the next day. It's not going to work out, and uh, you know probably. Uh, don't uh, date someone for seven months and marry them at 19. That's probably not going to work out for you. It definitely did for me. But yeah, um, exactly. I'm better than all of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. To, to, <laughs> to each their own. I was, Miranda and I have been together for like six years at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Definitely my favorite of your girlfriends. Oh, oh thanks. Right yeah, she's, she's my favorite of my girlfriends as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's legally obligated to say that. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I know your past girlfriends. There's no competition. You're 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 solidly <laughs> on here. <laughs> hmm. Nice. I, I'm starting to feel offended now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, Cole, he was just missing. He was he was just in a ditch. Then Miranda came along and saved him mm-hmm. from the gutter. <laughs> All right, let me see what I got mm, left here on my list. We're good. We're get. We're getting prog. Making progress here, bud. All right, let me see. Do I have anything else that's like a longer term one? Oh, this one's more of a current one. So we talked a little bit about your hobbies. So this actually might just have the same answer or something. But like, what's the thing that you're like, like the most passionate about? Like, like um, mm. I don't know. Like for me, it's it, it's often like different than like my hobbies or what I'm doing necessarily. But just something that you're like passionate about. Yeah, I guess I don't know. My my hobbies change so much and mm-hmm. I don't stay passionate about things for like a super long time. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I flip around hobbies a lot. Right now it's been probably checking out stuff in Colorado. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. been like super cool. Yeah, checking out the mountains. I gotta while I'm here. My time of being unemployed oh, excuse me. Came to an end. And now I don't get to do that anymore. But it was pretty awesome while it lasted. I still want to go out and do it. I'm very, you know, I don't have as much time for it. But mm-hmm. there's that. Um, I got yeah, beer brewing, I guess. I mean, that's that's stuck with me longer than most of my hobbies do. So you're right. Really but passionate although that, about that, that. Admittedly, that could be because doing a one think one slice of your hobby takes a month. So uh... that is exactly, I think, why. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I have told people have that to exact be thing. I'm like, it literally, yeah. I think it just helps that I, I can't do it for three days straight. <laughs> I do it for like a few hours one night and then I can't touch it again. So, I don't yeah, know. That's, prob- that's pretty cool. That makes a lot of sense. You can't like burn yourself out on it because you're just not going to have room for that many buckets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like it. I, I don't like know. It. <laughs> I don't have anything. I don't know. I did some cool projects with electronics, I guess, but nice. You know, I, know. I like it. I, I never have one sole thing that I'm very passionate about. Mm. Because it usually only lasts a few months if I am. Nice. All right. Let me roll. Oh, I just had this. I just had it pulled up. It was. All right. Here we go. So this one's this one's going back into the past again. But like, looking back uh, on our short lives here, like what what like uh. What time in your life is the most nostalgic when you look back on it? And you're just like, man, that was just like such a time. Like, just I mean, vibes. Not for like things that I necessarily did, I guess. But like, end of elementary school to like junior high ish was definitely pretty good. Uh, even though we talked about I, I was kind of an asshole, but yeah. I don't know. That that's just like a time in your life when you can truly enjoy things that you can anymore. I think back mm-hmm. like just being able to do the same thing over and over and over again and not get tired of it and just loving it and oh, I, yeah. there's just something to it or like playing I always think about like playing video games now. Now I'm like, oh, I need to like when is how far am I in the storyline? When am I going to finish it? Like 100%. I would sit on the same level like Lego Star Wars. I would play for like two hours on the same level trying to get all the canisters, and there's no way I do that now. Now I'm like straight to Google yep. if I can't find it in five minutes, and I just like yep. I didn't even get bored. Like I loved it. <laughs> Man, I'm right, I'm right there with you. Like I remember like all the games that I would just like I I'd play games all the time, 
nonstop. Like when I had ga- that GameFly subscription for a few months. Oh, man, yeah. I, I ripped through that. so many games and I could just <laughs> get locked in the zone. I'd forget to eat. It wouldn't matter because I'm six. You know, I'm like sixth grade. My mom will just throw food in my general direction. Yeah. It's like, and, I, and I've just completely lost the ability to like do some stuff like that. Like for me, like a part, a part of it is my brain just has this dumb ish that'll just, just come up and it'll be like, you need to be productive. You know, you can yeah. do it right now, bro. That, that is you a real thing. Something. It's the it's the worst. <laughs> I, I hate it. Like I'll find like, I'll find myself can't doing enjoy it. myself for a day. Yeah. It's it's the it's just the worst. And like I, I like I've, I've you know I figured out some ways around it. Like I feel like you know like uh, I played Sea of Thieves last night. I just downloaded that. And if I'm playing, oh, wait, did you? Sorry, did you just get that? Because I, I have just it. get that. Yeah, I have it. Me Ooh, and my my man. friend Ryan. Uh, we play it. Hey, Are you playing dang. with anyone? Because it kind of sucked with two people. Yeah, I'm play- I played it. I played it with Zach and Maggie a little bit. Uh, they have a, had a friend, TK, but Debbie mm. just got it too. So we could definitely play some Sea of Thieves, man. That, w- that would be pretty cool. We all right. We stopped playing because we got wrecked all the time because we were only <laughs> two people. So yeah, yeah, we had yeah we were, we ran uh, we ran with three people. We ran with four people. So the two different sized ships we ended up running with, and it was it was pretty fun. Like yeah, we at a certain point. We'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll have to get you yeah. into a game with Zach and Maggie because Zach knows all the <laughs> ins and outs, and then it's it's just like you get into rhythm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, I'd be very down for that. But yeah, Heck yeah. Anyway, I, I, I had to say that, that before we went. We, we continued. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so we'll play that. And if I, if I'm playing a game with other people, then my brain can get tricked and be like, okay, this is chill. Let's get back in that mindset. So if I'm playing with people is one way, and the only other time is like if I get a little inebriated with a substance or something like that oh then yeah I, then you don't care then I, then, 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 I, then I feel like i'm a kid again man it's it's it's, it's nice sometimes <laughs> like if i hit right but oh man mm. Mm. gets me that's that's one of the things that i miss so much i've been trying to yeah, reach you that's that's yeah that's the nostalgia for me is just yeah the fact that you can truly enjoy things nice uh, that's yep, yeah I that's think, <laughs> yeah i think that period that period for me I think mine's probably later. I'd probably say my nostalgic period is probably like the last two or three years of high school. Um, just because then I got past my self-esteem thing and like particularly mm. like fourth through sixth grade, like uh, like looking back, I, I had I, I had depression. It was nasty. It was like, yeah. I, like I like I look back and I don't even like I don't even like thinking about how like like I just I just don't like myself if I right <laughs> think back to that <laughs> not a big fan yeah but, yeah we All we right. had like the reverse probably then <laughs> yeah we, my we last, had my we last had two years of high school were very arcs. bad <laughs> my last yeah my junior year of high school to like sophomore year of college were my worst so oh interesting hmm yeah that was pretty much exactly the opposite yeah, we had completely opposite, <laughs> like uh, like sinusoidal graphs going up and down. We just traded traded energies. <laughs> yep, we we're just it, tur- it turns out that only one of us can be happy at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I passed the baton to you. I was like, I've had it long enough. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> you say we, just, we just keep going, keep going back and forth. Man, my life's about to take a downward spiral. You're gonna hit that honeymoon period. I'm gonna have to go like get shot in Tijuana or something. <laughs> All right, let me see. Do I, well, what other questions do I got here that I haven't done yet? We're probably getting close to wrapping up. Um, okay, so here we go. Here, This is probably one of the last two or something like that. Um, so, you know, like people that last, like, you know, if you had the opportunity to start your life over, what would you do differently? And like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to you about specific things, but I was just thinking about this the other day. And like, if you started over your life, like, you know, and like you have, you have your knowledge of everything that's happened at this point. Um, you like, you like start over, like, like what's your, like, what's your strategy, right? Because I think ideally, I think I would decide to just take it in a completely different direction and live a completely different life. Right. But you know, I'm not, you know, I waffle on it a little bit. So like, what, what do you think your strategy would be? I don't know. I, I feel like it'd be hard to live a completely different life because so much of your life depends on like your personality. That's true. So you'd almost have to have like a complete personality shift, I feel like, to really I don't know, change like a ton of it. You could That's definitely true. change like certain aspects. Like you go to a different I don't know, 
degree in college like that would do it but like you can't be like oh i was super shy i'm gonna be very outgoing if you like yeah, have the same mindset that, that, like you can't really point. make that change yeah that's a good that's a good point yeah because your personality to me, is a, so like the big changes you could make yeah would be like you know once you're grown up enough to like make your own life decisions and then yeah, maybe i feel like, like that would be pretty maybe big. like changing location right so like instead of moving to colorado you go to like mm -hmm. you know you decide to go to australia instead or something like that you know like that would yeah, probably be you the can way make to some make pretty a big change but big changes but i yeah i don't know i feel like you as a person would be the same doing different things kind of you know that's a good point because like um i'll notice i'll, I'll play like a like an rpg like mass effect right and i'll play through and i'll do like either a, like 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 obviously i'm just I'm, I'm gonna go i'm gonna go paragon right i don't like being a douche mm -hmm. nozzle yeah and uh <laughs> and then i'll come around and be like okay i'm gonna do a bad playthrough and i'll make like one decision i'll be like oh nope 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 go back to that's at, yeah to that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually it, like a great comparison for that yeah because i feel like every time you go back to replay a video game you just like constantly just get routed to that same path yeah that you so you usually so you, go to yeah to continue the analogy you'd almost have to just like play a different game right you just like either like yep. pick something different to throw yourself into and keep the same because your personality is going to be the same yeah it like because you know if you, if, you're, I think if you start you, playing skyrim you're just going to end up being a sneaky archer every time it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just the optimal build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's. I guess I think you could really try, and you could change yourself, but I think it would be a huge effort. And I guess I you, so. as a second grader, you'd you'd kind of still be like a thirty year old if you knew yeah, all of your knowledge. It'd, it'd be like, like I think <laughs> it, it would be really interesting growing up because I feel like you know you're gonna be stuck obviously doing the same stuff mostly when you're a kid. But you, so you'd like have some foreknowledge of what's gonna what's gonna happen, and you can like play a social situation differently or something, mm -hmm. like you know, like, like like a petty argument in fourth grade where it's like, <laughs> oh man, if 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 you would have done that differently, that wouldn't happen. It's like I just did, bitch. It was the same <laughs> outcome. <laughs> did the same thing. <laughs> it's not the problem. Isn't mine. You're just a bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I know if I did the different thing, it would be the same. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like the yeah, like one thing that I don't know, or like you just don't care. I feel like you would just not care about so much stuff growing up again. You might, you'd probably I, be right. because looking back now, you know how much of it, how much of it, like truly mattered. Like very, I, it's kind pretty, of some yeah, of it. Yes, yeah, I don't remember ninety percent of what happened. <laughs> it's true. As long as like the same gist of what happened maybe happened, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, you get into some weird mechanics of like, so is your you're basically like a thirty year old brain trapped in a seven year old body, or do you still have the mental capacity of a seven? Yeah, it, it gets a little complicated if you try diving too deep. But yeah, yeah, it's it's real it's real weird. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. I I feel pretty solid about what I've done. I guess. I don't, yeah, I don't think change I'd... a whole lot. Yeah, the only thing I'd like to do is maybe have gotten up on uh, depression, anxiety issues before the fact. Yeah. Or at least earlier than when I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, I wasted on that, a few on that, years on that. On that. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's like the one thing that I think I would truly change. Other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Agreed. All right. Nice. Now I do have, let me see here. Do I have a, do I have a stupid question? Um, Oh, no, I didn't come up with a ridiculous, dumb question. Well, I'm going to ask you the same question that we ended the last podcast with, right? Mm. All right, this is this is now the official staple No Life Jackets podcast ending question. So uh, <clears throat> you need to uh, pick a heist gang of uh, huh? people you know and your friends to steal the Declaration of Independence with. Who do you pick and what are their roles that they play? Mm. I mean, what kind of roles are we looking for here? Well, like, you right. know, you could do the classic, like, you know, the getaway driver, the the, the, <laughs> the laser dodging ninja guy, the, the, the forger. That... You can come up with whatever. <laughs> the, the brewer. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need alcohol for this. Clearly. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, I mean, I got to select my man, Brian. No. For, I'll think of roles maybe in a little bit. <laughs> no worries. Um. Hmm. Who are my shady friends? You're shady. That, that would be good. I mean, you got to choose friends who would be down for it, right? 
Hundred percent. That was actually uh, last <laughs> week. I picked a friend who was a real straight arrow, and I told him, I, and I picked him as my getaway driver. But the caveat is that we're not going to tell him that he's the getaway driver. <laughs> like, hey, pick me up outside. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my my goody two shoes friend as like the person who. Uh, I'm just gonna tell them misinformation, so when they tell the police, it actually benefits me. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> who do I even have? Hmm. I feel like Jess would be good. I, I, I need him for it. We've done illegal mm. things together <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. uh, that I won't discuss. Yep. Sounds good. That's, they're not, that's not so Statute bad. of limitations. I, I, I make, I make it soon. <laughs> stole, <laughs> be like stole signs and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. I know. Mm-hmm. Um, can't believe you're not canceled right now. Hmm. So Jess, I mean, Dylan was there for some of that. Gotta get Dylan Anders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's, he's a little shady character. Get your Sorry, together. Anders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have like college friends that I feel like are too shady. They're all, they're all too good of people. Let me tell you, that's really the downside. As you grow up, I... you're not being forced <laughs> to make friends with people who are going to make questionable choices, so you just pick too good of people. It's a Why? Problem. Why are my friends making this hard on me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. I, I gotta pick some roles, though. I feel like we gotta have someone like the HQ man, um, mm. in the van outside. Yep. Hmm. Who would be good at that? Who would be good at talking and seeing things, reading things, doing research? Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel oh, like that'd be bothers. you over, over anyone else. Like, the people that I choose, I don't think are, like... Yeah, you probably, uh, you're, probably, you're probably right. Cool over yeah. there. I feel like you, you got a little bit of the brains in you. Man in the chair, I like it. Or, or a lot, yeah. You, you're in the van outside. We got, um, let's see. We got honors as a distraction, or the man who's he'd be a good distraction. Provide, I don't know. He, the, you know, a little bit of a, a deceiving person. Mm-hmm. I feel like he could do that well. I like it. I like. I, it. I need a muscle man. I don't have any muscle people. It's true. I'm trying to think. I mean, I could know. be muscle. I, I could bring my old roommate Ryan. Um. There I don't think go. you've met him. Yeah, he you'll meet him. You'll meet him at the wedding. Hey. Uh yeah, he's my older mate. He's probably he's probably my best friend in like far definitely from Fargo. So mm-hmm. yeah, he, he can be my muscle man. He's he's a bit of a straight arrow, but I, I could convince him. Oh yeah. It's um, a decoration of independence. This is for yeah. a good cause. Yeah, he'll be my muscle guy if we need any muscle stuff. Um let's see. I, I can't imagine we need to throw anything. I feel like Jess would be good at that. I, I frothed with him a couple times lately, and he's way better than me. So, oh, dude, that'd be sick! Like part a part of the heist is you have to like go between the bars with a disc; it'll flatten out. It'll, like catch like knock out security cameras yes. with frisbee golf discs. Oh, that'd be so. so oh, I love it. I can that, see the slow motion his scene job. already. <laughs> um. Hmm. Let's see what else we got. I, Dylan can like get the get the goods, you know. Mm-hmm. You can have the connections, maybe. Ooh, and then I'm just yeah. gonna be there. I, I'll just be there. Yeah, you're, I'll, you're, I'll be the one that actually Nic- grabs it. Yeah, you're Nicholas cool Cage part. in this scenario. You pop, you pop on in. Mm, you, you, yeah. you overact. You, you, you just pop it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Let me think here. Yeah. I did one. I did one last week. Last week with Zach, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with with uh I'm gonna do this one with uh only only friends from our childhood that we both like, oh, we, we both remember here. I feel so, like we have decent friends for this. I feel like we do have decent friends for this. Like I feel like you, I feel like you bring in like Colt, like Colton, right? You bring in Colton as like your 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 uh, old purpose getaway driver slash demolitions man. I don't oh, know he, why. Yeah, I feel like he can no, blow stuff up. That's you know? totally, especially driving. Like especially if we all take a dirt bike out. Like ooh, if we, it's a dirt bike heist. <laughs> I yeah, love all it. all five of us on one dirt bike. That is reasonable. I like it. I like it. I like Let's a four wheeler. Yeah. What, what other roles do we need here from childhood? Ooh, I feel like um uh so Tyler. He's like uh he's ooh shit I said a last name I'm gonna have to edit this son of a no I'm gonna have to edit but anyway Tyler what's his name he's a like a news <laughs> producer now right so he's like all up in the oh. camera business I feel like he's my distraction guy who gets us in like he gets mm. an interview with like. The guy who like go. dusts off the Declaration of Independence, and while he's doing that, we're, we're like his crew, and we sneak around. Yeah, like business. during the during like the news broadcast, you just see us in the back, just mm-hmm. like walking back there. Yeah, I dig it. 
All right, I'm gonna make a note Get here in. to edit that out real quick. Edit out Tyler's <laughs> last name. All right, there we go. Just uh, in case the law is gonna come from when the declaration gets <laughs> stolen. <laughs> But uh, exactly. Uh, okay, so he's he's gonna he's gonna be our, our ticket in, and then I feel like um, for some reason I think I just need Alex there to do the Dougie. Um, I don't know where he's gonna do it, but I need him to do the Dougie at some point. Um, so he's gonna be, he's gonna be. It's a necessary heist. Job. <laughs> it's a hundred percent necessary. I. It, it's not really relevant anymore, but. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and then I think I, I think what's I think what's missing is I need a I I need a I need a villain like a like like someone to mm. overact and play a slimy villain to my to my suave Nicolas Cage and I think I'm gonna pick Adam, you know I think I'm gonna pick Adam to be the be the villain in here I don't know what his motivation so is is, be. is he a villain out. on our side or is he a villain to us by being good I feel I feel like he's a villain to us but he's like 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 in the, the kind of way like he's also trying to steal it but not uh, oh so he's he's just a rival villain. Exactly. He's okay. like he's like a I rival, but he's clearly got bad motivations. Uh, you know. So I think I think I think that's that's going to be uh that's got to be Adam's role right there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think that's well, that's yeah. what I'm going to have. I don't to do. know. That's Yeah. All right, sweet. All right, well that's the that's the last question I had for this one. I think we're about going to be oh, I think this is going to be about the same length as the last one hour and a half or so so we'll see how that goes. I, you just have to make sure that everyone talks for an hour and a half. Every exactly. single person. It's, and if they don't uh don't have I don't even know what you can do to them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll shock them. I'll it's say the their trash. full name on the <laughs> podcast and just not edit it the out. entire <laughs> the entire rest of the time they didn't use is just you exposing them. <laughs> I should, I should write down the timestamp when I said that name, so I remember the 30s. <laughs> Look at me remembering to do this. In the second part. All right, but yeah. So uh, any other any other tangents or uh, or uh, questions you've got before we close this one out here? Man, I I didn't I wasn't prepared for this. Gotcha. No worries. Neither was uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> I. You must have been a little prepared. I. You're right. I did write down questions. It was hard work. Let me tell you. It's amazing uh, yeah, that you, I can do a full-time job and this. When you this. move into Colorado. Moving to Colorado. Well, it's interesting. Uh, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned it. We have some friends who are uh, – they're, they're trying to move out there, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do it before the mm -hmm. winter. So we'll see. But the, but the plan was at some point, possibly, uh, we'd probably end up being down to move, but we have to, like, uh, we have to like start a commune kind of a thing, right? So like they go ahead, oh, okay. they purchase a bunch of land and build a house on it. And then, like, we'll build a house on it and move out there. And then you'll build a house out there and move mm -hmm. onto it. And then we can start building, like, houses for our parents. And eventually it's just going to be a, it's just gonna be a just thriving a just community town. where we can start our cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm down for a cult. I'm down for that. <laughs> but, yeah, like, like, like that, I'm, I'm definitely down for it. We've been <laughs> we, 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 talk, we talk that over with them. And if that happens, I'll let you know. You can join the comedy. Yeah, you better. I, I, I need to be one of the founding members. Heck yeah. Especially if cult activities happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll I'm sure, statues. I'm sure Miranda would love it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> 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 All right, awesome. Okay, No Life Jackets podcast. Uh, we're done. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. <laughs>